Have you ever cried whilst watching a film on an airplane? Did you think that was because you were in the air? We sought to get to the bottom of whether that's a real effect or just an urban myth. This is a Peer J video abstract. So my name is Paul Wicks, and I'm a neuropsychologist. I'm a frequent flyer. I live in the UK and go over to Boston about every three or four weeks and watch a lot of films. And I would hear this sort of urban legend repeated on the radio or read about it in newspapers quite often and see it kind of go unchallenged. There would be lots of social media articles saying, why do we cry more when we watch films on planes? And when I read the article, there was actually no data or evidence to suggest that was the case. What really triggered the study for me was this term altitude adjusted lachrymosity syndrome or AALS. That's actually an in joke from the radio program and podcast Commode and Mayo's film review show, where they speculated it was due to the altitude, perhaps the air quality, perhaps alcohol, perhaps the different emotional settings. A lot of people on planes seem to have these very emotional experiences. My training as a neuropsychologist means investigating uncontrollable laughter, crying and smiling in neurodegenerative diseases, things like ALS or motor neuron disease, Parkinson's or dementia. And so if there was some sort of repeatable model where we could adjust or modify the way that healthy people laugh more or cry more at films in different settings, that could be really useful for us for developing new treatments and new therapy. And so it became an idea that we might be able to use that as a model to understand the neurological condition of pseudobulbar affect in people who actually had a medical condition. If so, that would be a dramatically cheaper way of studying these effects to do more powerful studies and to do research more quickly. So we set out to try and understand whether or not people who had watched a film on a plane and then subsequently watched a film on the ground were more likely to cry at the first group than the second group. We did a survey over the internet with a group of research participants at Amazon Mechanical Turk. Once we surveyed over a thousand people who'd flown recently on an airplane, we found that if there was a difference, it wasn't due to being up in the air. So the actual rate of crying is very similar between watching a film in the air and on the ground. We were surprised to find no elevated level of crying when you watch a film, any given film, on a plane versus on the ground. The overall rate, the overall likelihood that you might cry whilst watching a film is around one in four, regardless of whether or not you're on the ground or in the air. There are a number of important differences that we found that help to explain this. As it turns out, when you're on an airplane, you choose different films. When people are having an emotional reaction, it may be that they've chosen a different type of film that's a little bit of a guilty pleasure, and at a time that they've actually seen lots of films in a concentrated span of time. So if you went on a long haul journey and watched, say, three films on the way out and three films on the way back, you could have watched six movies in the course of a week. That's about as many times as the average adult goes to the cinema in a year. So when you think, do I cry more at films on a plane, you could easily recall an instance where you cried on a plane more easily than perhaps crying in the cinema. But that's really just because you've had dramatically heightened exposure to films on the plane. And so it's not the altitude per se. It may just be the films that you've chosen. Future research could take the same film, so something like an animated film, uh, and try and see if people react differently to it um, in the air versus on the ground. One of the elements that we tried to explore here was the notion of fake news. And for those who have an interest in reporting of science, there's been a lot recently about the replication crisis, uh, and p-hacking, and the idea that sometimes you go out as a researcher and you tend to find whatever it is that you're looking for or what you wanted to find. When we hear about a finding that we see reported on a blog or in social media that points out an everyday phenomena or one of those little, hey, have you ever noticed the way type observations, we shouldn't always take it at face value. And although our methods to go and experiment and collect data might not be perfect, they can at least make a good start on trying to understand, is this phenomenon really real? Uh, otherwise, we could be susceptible to fake news. And fake news in the case of a medical disorder could be very dangerous. Two billion passengers fly each year. And if there's something about the nature of traveling on an airplane that affects their physiology, which in turn affects their behavior, that could be important as an aviation medicine public health finding. It's important to understand if there's any increased risk of aberrant behavior when people are flying, given how frequently we do it. In terms of next steps for research, uh, we're open to offers of funding from large airlines or billionaires like Sir Richard Branson to really get to the bottom of this subject in more detail, uh, preferably in first class.